Hey, Stitchy friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher. I am back on Saturday, the 23rd of January. It's about 1 o'clock, and this is, I think, video number 38. So last time, I want to thank you for the huge, huge um, outpouring of love and great comments about my whip parade. I had a few people that were like, you better get stitching. <laughs> so, you know, it's all relative. Um, Hopefully I'll live a long time and I'll finish everything. We'll, ju we'll just see. <laughs> um, I really didn't think I had very much to show today because I've only stitched on a few different things. So that being said, I started to say, I started to think, well, okay, I'll collect this and I'll show them that and then I'll add to this. And now I have a pile of stuff <laughs> all around me. Part of the thing is because I have a lot of newer um, subscribers in that you know in the past year I've I don't know how many additional I'm creeping up on 10,000 subscribers so my husband and I are trying to think of something that would be fun to give away or somehow to celebrate 10,000 subscribers so thank you all for subscribing I hope you all hit the like button subscribe notify all of that good stuff and I just thank you all for watching all my ramblings so Anyway, I'm not sure where to get started because I have some framed pieces I want to show you. I have some wool things. I think wool and quilts I'm going to do at the end. So I think I will start with um, what I've been working on. And then I will continue. Let me just move this here so I have a place to put things when I'm finished talking about them. And then I will continue with things I want to stitch. And then I'll show you some of my frame pieces. And then I'll be on to quilts and wool stuff. And hopefully I can remember what I just, I just said. Oh, my. So January's flying by. Um, we had some cool weather here, and now it's warm again. I think Monday it's supposed to be 80, which I'm not really ready for that because we had rain the last few days, and it turned humid, and even though it's only like 70 degrees, 68, it's humid, so it feels warmer. So we had to kick the air conditioning back on. So it is what it is. We live in Florida. <laughs> Although the northern part of Florida is really not the same as like mid-Florida or southern Florida. Just in case you wanted a weather report. Okay, let's get started. Um, I was pretty monogamous on one particular thing, and I'm not exactly sure where I was on my last video as far as how far I'd gotten, but that's this pattern, Elizabeth Watt by Milady's Needle. This picture is certainly not... Not one that flatters it. And I talked about how last time this girl, you know, some of these bands are perfect and others are just, you know, wonky, wonky, wonky. So really had to count. Every in and out on the vine of the border was different. So it's been challenging. <laughs> but this is where I am on Elizabeth Watt. So I have this first top band finished. I have some of the flowers along the side, although I haven't put the tips of the flowers, berries, beads, whatever. And then the second <clears throat> band, I realized that I had, because I'm using NPI's silks, which is needlepoint and some call it NPS, some say NPI. It's um, silks. It stands for needlepoint, incorporated needlepoint, whatever. So these are the silks. There's different reds, different greens, forest green to all the way to olive, and pinks all the way to reds, purples. But I had collected all the colors, but one of the colors I had the bag that it was in because I put them in these... Um, I like these floss away bags for things that come on skeins, except DMC. DMC I like to hang on um, 
floss tags. But these are floss away bags. You can get them in a lot of different places. But um, I had a color that I had marked with the wrong number. It was this 933. So what was in it was actually, it's, it's a dark, deep burgundy red. What was in here was 993. So I realized I was missing a color. So I kind of stopped on it for a little while because in this band, like the basket that this is on, some of the leaves, the middle part of this, the basket here, those all use that color. So I, and I'm hesitant to do this. I did, but I'm hesitant to just do things that are just kind of flying because invariably I'll get my count off. But I did a few. So now that I have that color, it just came yesterday. I'll be able to get back to those. So then I went ahead and started on the next band, which is the house and the tree. I love that tree. Very colorful. And the other side is pretty much a mirror image, although the colors like in the tree are a little different. And then the last is like an Adam and Eve type scene, this last band. I was really wanting to finish it in January, but I don't think that's going to happen because I still have a lot of the border flowers to do. But it is what it is. I'm not pressuring myself. And then there was a whip that I didn't show you last time that I had started. I don't know where it was, but anyway, and this is Brother's Keeper by um, Plum Street. It kind of has a Hawk Run Hollow feel with the different um, boxes or whatever you want to call them. Oh, I didn't say. Elizabeth Watt, I'm stitching on 40 count Weeks Parchment. That's the Zweigart base. This, I had started on 36 count. Um, 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 what is this? Vintage Exemplar. And so I put a few more stitches in this. One of the nice things when you do something with these boxes, once you get the first box, then the second one, you really only have to count to here because if I can do this backwards. Going down is going to be the same as this, as long as your first box is correct. And here, going across is going to be the same as this. So you, then you just have to... So each box, it ends up you only need to count like one direction because then you can follow the other boxes. Does that make sense? So anyway, I got a little bit of start. And this is the block that says... Block. That's the word. Not boxes. Block. That's the one that says Cain and Abel. So I'm going to continue to, to work a little bit on that. Somebody I was in a stitching, or I'm somebody that was in our stitching group before she moved, she had finished this, and I really liked it. And that's when I bought the pattern, so that's been years ago. And on that, I'm using the called for over-dyed cottons. And this color here looks like it's like out of place, but it's really only just a little bit on some of the flowers. So it's kind of what I would call kind of traditional colors. So I'd like to get back to that. And then I'm easily influenced, just like we all are, with different things that other people are stitching. And... Um, and yes, I did get a haircut, so thanks for noticing. <laughs> Finally, I quit cutting my own hair. That was my COVID thing, was to cut my own hair. You can get to a point where it's like, okay, we need to have somebody really trim this up. Anyway, that was a little side note. So a couple of people are stitching this. Don't ask me to tell you their names, because even if I told you their names, it would be their Instagram name, not necessarily their, their actual name. This is Anne Dale by Shakespeare's Peddler. This is called Big and Beautiful because it's big and beautiful. There's a lot of reds and pinks, 
but it also has a lot of light colors. So you can't use a real, I mean, like it, reds would look good on a light, light linen, but a lot of these other lighter colors are just going to fade away on a real light linen. It calls for Lakeside Pear. I had a piece of 36 count, but I decided I really wanted to do it on 40. So I waited for a long time from, I think I had originally ordered it from 123 Stitch. They had it in stock. I ordered it. By the time they were going to ship my order, they were out of it. And so then they, um, they finally got it in <clears throat> at least six months. Of course, they didn't charge me during that time, but so that's fine. And then they sent me an email, are you still interested? And I said, yes, I am. So I got the 40 count pair. It's pretty yellow green. See, that is not the color. Let's see. Well, I'm not going to get a true color. It's pretty yellow green, but I went ahead and started it. I love the red. And it's showing a lot more gray because in reality, it's, it, you know, some of these splotchy areas are really more green or yellow. Like this is more yellow. <laughs> we all do this, like holding it in all different configurations to try to get the true color. But it may, there, that's a little bit better. But it made me think, well, maybe it's too yellowy. But I love the red on it. So then I thought, well, I'm going to order something that might work. And I had a fat quarter of this fiber on a whim wheat that I got from Victorian Rose Needle Arts. This is one of those things. I was watching the tracking. It went like six different places places in Jacksonville. That just drives me nuts. It's like, I understand if it's got trouble getting to Jacksonville, but once it gets to Jacksonville, just send it to my post office and let the mailman bring it. <laughs> because this, you know, going sightseeing in Jacksonville post offices is just a little ridiculous to me. <laughs> but anyway, it came. And I've decided it's a great piece of linen. And in reality, it kind of looks, it's a little more green, yellow green than it shows. But it kind of looks a little bit like Legacy by Picture This Plus, the color Legacy by Picture This Plus. But I just decided it was a little bit too light because of those lighter colors. And even the tans, you know, if you get a tan that doesn't show up, you know, it, this is a huge sampler. And even the tan here, which is the top of the flower buds, doesn't really show up very much. I don't mind that because on the picture it doesn't show up that much either. Right up here. So I think it's okay and I think it'll be fine, but I'm just going to continue. And especially when I start adding more colors, I think it's going to be all right. So this is Ann Dale. That's as far as I got. Because I got to a certain point, and then I was like, uh, and I want to love it. So I may just have to talk myself into loving it and then just keep going. Because I think as I go, I'm really going to like it. So I worked on that a little bit. And then I decided... Um, Teresa Kitten Stitcher finished her Anne Grimshaw. This is by Scarlet Letter. This is an Ackworth Quaker. And I love the way it's, well, it's all Quaker, but I love the combination of the alphabets. And there again, this is a huge one. The count, and I'm doing it on 35 count, or 36. It'll be almost 19 by 24 and a half. That's about this. So, well, no, that's not. This Christmas garden is not as big as that, I don't think. And I had already had a start on it, but I did work on it a little bit. I got this whole section done. So I'm still working on that particular motif. I'm going across the top. So this will be the size of it. 
across. Oops, here we go. So it's pretty big. And that is just about 18 inches, 18, 19 inches. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm using silk. Oh, and this is 35, 36 count pecan. It's not vintage pecan, it's just pecan butter by Lakeside. I've had this for a long time. This piece. And I'm using um, Antique Black by Gloriana. I don't know why some of it's in a bag and some of I don't know. I don't claim to know, so it is what it is. So that's really all I've worked on. But for two weeks, I did spend, I would say, probably at least nine of the 14 days on um, Elizabeth Watt. Okay, so what... I picked a couple of whips. Oh, wait, I have one other thing that I started. This I'd actually had a little bit of a start on. But I picked it up again. This is Scattered Seed Spring Gathering. And I literally have very, very, very little done. But I think I had started on the, I mean, I had like six stitches in it. And so I picked it up and just got reacquainted with this because I really want to do this this spring. And that's, this is this pattern. And then there's a companion one that is spring delivery. I don't even have it kitted. I want to finish this one first. One's ABC. One's one, two, three. They're very cute by Scattered Seed. Spring delivery and spring gathering. I think they'd be really cute somewhere. <laughs> okay, a couple of housekeeping things before I continue with what I want to work on this next month. I'm going to continue on Elizabeth Watt. This one is Ann Peg. Of course she did too. This is Ann Peg by Scarlet House. Or sorry, Ann, Anna Grader. Ann Peg is actually this one right here. This is Anna Grader by Scarlet House. I had a few people ask what was the one on the easel. 1812. Um, I was going to see if it had I. Yeah, it does. This whole, this capital letter, alpha, or uppercase, whatever you call it, alphabet is all um, eyelet stitches. I think that's it. I really enjoyed this, and I love just the simple black frame. So that's that. These are these candles that you can, they're kind of cool. You, you put um, batteries on the inside. I bought them for Christmas, but I kind of like the red one out here, so I left it out. So you twist, the, you put batteries in, you twist the bottom, and it goes on. And it will stay on for... 12 hours. Is that it? No. It'll stay on for six hours and then it'll go off. Something like that. It stays on for a certain amount of time. So once I turn it back on, it'll stay on for that certain length of time and then it'll be off. So then it'll come back on whatever time I... So I start them at like, you know, seven at night. They're on till like one or maybe I'll... Whatever it gets dark. And then they automatically will shut off and they'll automatically come back on tomorrow. I got them on, um, I think I got them on Amazon. It was just battery operated candles. These are red. I have some that are um, more like a brownish, but they're kind of fun. Um, where am I? I have to keep track of where I am because I will be losing it here in a little bit. I get so many random phone call numbers. It's like, I don't know who you are, but go away. It's real kind, isn't it? Some of them will actually say spam call or junk call or whatever it titles it. And some are just like, and then I'm always hesitant because it's like, well, is it, maybe this is a new quilt customer. 
And so then I just say, okay, if you're a cool cup customer, you can leave a message. <laughs> if you're not, move along. <laughs> Here's some things I want to work on this um, next time. I am going to try to attempt to get a handle on some of my whips. So this, each month I'll show you a couple that I want to, what I'd, I'd like to work on them until they're finished. I, I hate to pick them up work for three or four days and then put them away. I know eventually you get progress doing that, but I'm, I want them done and on my walls. But I also, I'm, so I guess I'm a process as well as a product. I like, I really like both. This is the ES Spot Sampler, Spot Motif Sampler by Of Female Worth. This was a unicorn for a long time. I mentioned this last time. And this is where I am. It's not huge, but I'd like to I'd like to get back to that in the next few weeks. So we'll see. These are the colors. I can't tell you what linen this is because it's a secret. No, I don't know. It's thirty six count something. I just in my book. I could go back and find where I had put what it is, but there's another one I really want to get back to, Miss Manners. This is by GGR, and this is the Antique, which I've said before, you have to look past the dirty or the kind of raw looking from the Antique, and this is where I am, and this is another 36 count something. I want to say this is probably either Weeks Parchment or Light Exemplar. It's actually Elizabeth Manners, 1843. I got this chart from the attic. Carolyn, um, which is Stash Sisters, works at the attic. And I have the attic silk conversion. Somebody asked me, you know, what makes you decide to use silk versus not silk? And I don't, I don't know that I can give a definitive answer. I would stitch everything with silk if I could, because I love it. I think it's beautiful. It, you know, it's just wonderful in your hand. Um, it's much smoother than cotton. But there's some things to me just, it doesn't warrant using silk and a lot of it too is what the designer calls for like scarlet house frequently she calls for silks now there will be a dmc conversion and i have nothing against dmc i've done tons of these projects behind me with dmc so but if i can afford silk at the time and i kind of think it's a special sampler then i'm fine um, using my quilt money <laughs> and buying silks. Now, sometimes you'll get a piece that's maybe a, um, a designer sampler, but it's from a store like Country Sampler that doesn't carry silks. So when they kit it, they'll do a conversion to cottons, and I will use the cotton conversion. So I'm really kind of, um, I don't venture out on my own a lot. A lot of people will say, well, I just use my own colors. I have a good eye for color, but I'm I'm just not that great at converting. Plus, I feel like you either have to have a shop that's close by that you can go to and actually say, okay, here's the DMC color, and it's a red, maybe a, you know, kind of a burgundy red, and now I want to go over to silks and compare because I want to convert it to silks. I don't have that. And silks are not expensive enough without having to travel. <laughs> To a shop that carries silks in order to convert it. So I don't do that. Now, there are times when I've been at a shop, and um, especially the one, oh, what's the name of it? Of course, I can't remember. It's an English one sampler. And I actually took the DMC and with me, and it was the shop in um, Stitchville in Minneapolis, and I went around and picked out. But 
usually if you're visiting someplace and you're with other people, you just don't have time to do that. So for those of you who are fortunate enough to have a shop where you can do your own conversion, that's be thankful because that's wonderful. For the rest of us, or some of us, if I want to sell conversion, then I call the attic because they're very good about saying, okay, I can, you know, we can do a silk conversion. And literally they'll go around and pick out. But I don't usually, well, I don't ever. I don't share that because to me that's their propriety, proprietorship, <laughs> whatever that word is. They own the silk conversion, so I'm not going to share that. Same with country sampler. If it calls for silks and they convert to cottons, then I'm not going to share that. Okay, here's a few things that I would like. I pulled because I would like to stitch them. That's wool. Okay, let me see if I can get organized here. Um, somewhere on Instagram I saw that Needlework Press said they're about ready to come out with seven red alphabets. I love six red alphabets, so I imagine I will love seven red alphabets. I've never stitched this. I haven't started it. Um, I just think it's fabulous. Carol Crago on Instagram, she has finished it. And I actually have a place on my wall that's kind of high up that it's like, oh man, I would love to have that frame there. So the piece of linen, I have it kitted. Duh. <laughs> that's my M.O. I have Gloriana Crimson, and this piece was cut for me specifically from the attic. I'm pretty sure it's, it's either 40 or 46 count, I think it's 46 count um, buttercream by Lakeside, and it's a huge O plate piece, so this is it folded in half. Now, it'll be beautiful, but it's pretty light. So that means, for the most part, I can't really carry threads. Some of these I can carry threads. But, um, I wish I could show, I can't show you the chart. Here we go. Up here, see how this, those, so some of those cannot be carried. But I'm going to experiment and see. I don't want to carry. But on uh, 46 count, it doesn't have 46 listed. It'll be somewhere around 35 by 5.5, which is fabulous. I mean, fabulous. So I have three skeins of that crimson, and I would really like to start this. I think it'll go fast, I think. Yeah, it's 46 count vintage buttercream that I got from the attic. And the chart is from Needlework Press. And somewhere she had commented on somebody's somebody's post that pretty soon seven red said seven red alphabets will be coming out. So that was a challenge. It's like, okay. A couple other things that and I'm kind of in a blackbird mood. I want to work on my samplers, but um, I bought this book, have done absolutely nothing with it. Nothing. So I think the first, I love this one on the back. Well, I love them all. Alma Barb, I, I don't know if you watch my videos, but you guys are just fabulous. I gotta tell you the story. So Barb is a huge, Barb of Blackbird is a huge, I don't think she'll mind me telling this, but she's a huge Paul McCartney fan, Beatle fan, and now Paul McCartney fan. So my sister lives in Wichita, and her son works for the arena. So there was a concert coming up with Paul McCartney, and this was years ago. We were at a retreat, and she told Barb this. And I don't think they were coming to Kansas City, which was where Blackbird gals lived at the time. I think Alma now lives in Colorado. But anyway, long story short, or long story long, whatever. <laughs> so so um, I told Barb, I said, you should go. 
Deb can get you tickets and um, you could stay at her house. I stay at her house all the time and you can stay in my room at her house. You'll have your own bathroom. So we kind of just threw it out there, not thinking that she would really, in fact, she was like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll buy the tickets if you guys can get them and, or you guys, meaning my sister and her son. So they got tickets and she came and so she got, I, let's say the concert was at seven and she got there like, say, I don't know, five in the afternoon, four in the afternoon. And so my sister said, you know, do you want to go get something to eat? And she said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm just going to go to the concert, spend the night, and then I'll leave early in the morning. Well, they sat down to have, you know, kind of some time together before um, the concert. My sister's husband is from Iowa, and he comes from a farming family. So I was like sitting here in Florida, pins and needles, like, oh, oh, the harvest day in my sister's house. I'm so excited. I got to hear all the details. So I called her and I said, so how was it? How was it? You know, and she said, well, it was fine until we sat down and then Dawn had to sit and talk about farming. <laughs> so I said, you didn't talk about stitching or quilting? She said, no, we talked about farming. I'm like, what did I get a hold of my brother-in-law? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> That is not the purpose of one of the Blackbird gals coming. You have to sit and talk about stitching and cross stitch and quilting. <laughs> Instead, they talked about farming. I, I, my sister's too polite. I would have nipped that in the mud <laughs> and said, okay, Don, time to exit. We're going to talk stitching. But Barb was so gracious and she had had family members that had farmed and they talked. No. <laughs> That's just a side story. You don't have to pay extra for it at all. So anyway, one of the one of the things I really want to stitch in here is this gorgeous drum. And it's done on a piece that has a string as long as my arm. Anyway, I serge my own, but sometimes if you get from one, two, three stitch, it'll already be serged, but obviously they didn't trim the serging. Anyway, it's 36 count Sanguine by Weeks. This is old Weeks. I don't think this is the Zweigart base. I'm pretty sure it's not. And I think I'm only missing one color, which I think is in another project. So here's the, you know, just kind of browns and topies and of course blackbird uses a lot of the same colors and this one is uh so these are all work weeks dirt road palomino this one is uh cinnabar and this one is brick i think i'm i'm not missing red pear let's see i'm missing carolina cecil but it's in another project so i have it i just have to get it out of the other project temporarily and then I'd also like to do this one what was that other one called a bit of summer this one is called let's see if I can do this ah. in my garden it's also a drum it's done on the weeks um, I think it actually calls for the cocoa, but I have a piece of the straw, so I'm going to do it on the straw. I, I think it'll be fine. I think the, the cocoa, I think, is a little bit lighter, but here's the colors. So these are some things that I'd like to work on. You know how that goes. Then when I was looking for a couple patterns to show you with some of my framed pieces, I came across this. I love this. This is Loose Feathers Pattern 30. A friend of mine did this, and I just think it's fabulous. It's called Rites of Spring. You know, some of these things are, I hate to even show them because they're out of print. But, you know, Barb and Alma are on Instagram. Blackbird Alma and Blackbird Barb, I think. You know, make a comment on a post. Please reprint this. You know, if 100 people do that, maybe they will. I don't know. They'll hate me for saying that. But 
you can only try, you know. I think secondary market is where you can get a lot of these loose feathers. Loose feathers started, at, I've told you this many times, in the early 2000s. My issue is I had them kitted with the original, so like this is a piece of 30 count something. And then it's like, okay, do I stitch it with two strands on the original called for? 30 count Irish cream by R&R. &R. Or do I get a different fabric? I almost feel like I should be true to the original. <laughs> How crazy is that? And then with Valentine's Day coming, some somebody is stitching this. I can't remember who I saw stitching that. But it's really cute. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's a basket with flowers and the heart. And that is done on 28 count, 28 count pomegranate. It's a little more pink than what it's showing. Yeah, more like that. And back when I got these kitted, the old mill stitchery, if you only needed a little bit, they would kit them in these little bags. Don't you just want to have these little bags? They're just so cute. And they would write on them. That way you didn't pay as much for the kit. And you only had what you needed. The main red is mulberry. You know, I just feel like sometimes I just should, you know, get off my high horse and stitch some of these on 28 or 30 count. At the time, we thought they were wonderful. So why... Why do we have to be so like, oh, I got all these stitch on 40. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I'm saying that. But I don't really feel that. I don't really feel like that's being snobbish. I feel like whatever you want to stitch, you should be stitching on regardless. But some of these, I'm not going to deny the fact that they're still beautiful, even on 28 or 30 count. I should edit all this <laughs> I'm digging a deeper hole the more I, the more I say. Okay, so I'm going to show you some pieces. This probably won't be super long review. We'll see. At least the stitching part. I'm going to show you some pieces that I have finished and framed. I've seen some people working on these, so I think it's kind of fun to see them finished. This is Salute to Abigail, which originally was on this little pattern because it was a part of a club in 2014. Salute to Abigail Adams. I don't even know if I got the other pattern. You know, the regular bigger pattern that came out later. And this is one of my favorite frames. I had this framed at Heart's Desire in Wichita. I did change the red. It originally called for silks, and my, my and I don't remember what I changed it to. My red, though, had some purple, so I had to kind of watch each strand to make sure I didn't get too much purple. Um, I'm not sure what it's stitched on. I just don't feel like I can share all that because I've done them quite a while ago. But this is Abigail Adams by Blackbird. Salute to Abigail. Okay, let me get out the patterns as I get to them. This is this was a um, it says a series of nine family history patterns. There were house patterns. I did one, I think, I, no, I've done three, I think, and my daughter has done one. But I don't know that they came out with nine. I want to say they came out with seven, but. Um, my daughter did this one. Um, I have this one kitted in my Missouri home. I think my daughter did that one. I think that's the one she did. And this one is this, obviously. 
I did it on whatever was called for at the time. I have my um, grandmother's maiden name, Bauer. My grandmother, no, this is my, let's see, is this my great? the date. I think this is my grandmother, not my great grandmother. It might be my great grandmother. I don't know. Anyway. Love the colors. Love it, love it, love it. And the name of this is um, Ma Maud Eloise. Because she put beam so this was obvious. It's supposed to be your family history, so she put Beam. And she put Maud Eloise for the name. So mine is Christina. The next one, let's see if I got out the pattern. And a lot of you have seen this one finished. Ooh, things are starting to get weird here. This is Quaker Garden. Obviously by Blackbird. And this is my framed piece. I have about, I don't know, 12 Blackbird pieces in my sewing room on the wall. And when you watch my videos, it's one of the pictures at the very beginning. There's like a, it's a kind of a grayish wall. And that's my Blackbird wall. So I have these up there. Quaker Garden. The next one that I want to show you, I thought I got another one down and I didn't. No. Okay, didn't get that one down. Maybe I'll do that next time. This is Birds of a Feather. I love this. This is, this is one of my very, very favorite Blackbird. I also had this framed in um, Wichita, Kansas at Heart's Desire. I just love this. It's kind of funky. It's kind of funky. Has this little bit of chain stitch up here. I did not change the colors. It's whatever it's called for. I don't know if this is still available or not. This. This was not a loose feathers. This was just birds of a feather. And I used the needlepoint silk that it called for. Let's see, it called for 32 count old town blend. And I'm pretty sure it looks like I did use two strands, so. No, NPI, I would have used one strand, the silk. So, love that. So these are on my blackbird wall. I have one more frame piece and then I have another finish that I did a long time ago that I want to show you. This is Agnes Platt Strawberry Sampler and this is the piece that I'm going to show you. Let's see if there's a better picture of it. This was done on an uneven linen. This is Loose Feathers 2013. This was done on an uneven linen so it looks square. But when you stitch it on a even linen, it's not square. And I did not like, I rarely change this kind of thing. But blackbirds are kind of adaptations. They don't always do true, true reproductions. I did not like, it just felt like I left it hanging. So this is my finish. There's a story about these queen stitches. I tried to do them, made a mess of them, and my friend, she said, give me that piece. She did the queen stitches, and since then I've done some of my own. I finished this in 2016, and I kind of freehanded, wrought by C. Witt Church in the year of our Lord, 2016. I just added that at the bottom, because as you can see, if I didn't have that, it is definitely not square a rectangle because I used an even linen not an uneven linen. This is one of the ones that hangs in it used to hang in my bedroom because I have 
patriotic in that bedroom, but it's really not patriotic. So it hangs in the hallway, mainly because it has a blue frame. I don't necessarily like to mix colored and, um, you know, painted frames. I don't mind if they're black, but that's just me. I like mostly brown or black frames in here. Which also brings up an interesting thing. This, I'll just take it off the wall. This one, a lot of people have asked about. And this is Still Waters. Whoops. By Plum Street. And I did this one, you know, some of them I'll say, well, I don't know when I did this. And right up at the top, it says 2016. So obviously both of these I did in the, no, let's see, what was this one? This, yeah, both of these I did in 2016. Okay, I'm not going to be able to put that back without banging other stuff around. So let me move that. Move this. And I don't know if you'd really consider it a companion piece to that, but I really want to do a thousand hills. So that chart was still waters. This one's a thousand hills. And there's a lot of stitching to this. I do have it kitted with some 40 count something. It's on a ring. Everything. Maybe I'll start that this month. At least get the border established. The counting won't be too bad because you have a flower, a flower, a flower. So I might start that. One more thing that's stitching. I don't know if I've ever, maybe I've shown this. I don't know. I think I saw somebody working on this. This is Home by Lottie Da. When I got it, it was a kit. Um, 2018, I did mine in 2019 and finished it. You can tell these are out of whack, but I'd never done anything like this. It was just kind of interesting. So I used all the stuff that was in there. It came with wool, a wool piece. I have a little ruler in here from the attic. It fits in there nice. I have a pair of scissors with a needle minder. And I put some button pins. But I was kind of proud of myself for figuring out how to do that. It's a lot of stitching. And even if you just framed it, I thought... It's too bad I did it in 2019, not 2020. <laughs> this would be the perfect piece for 2020. <laughs> Maybe it was in anticipation that we were going to be home <laughs> all of 2020. Although I'm a homebody anyway, so nothing new there. So <clears throat> that is all I have for stitching. If you want to move along, that's great. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you later. If you want to see a little quilting, I don't have any quilts pictures to show. I eventually want to get my husband to take a picture of the um, huge china cabinet that we have by our front, in the front stoop or whatever, foyer. A foyer sounds like, you know, this huge area. This is not. But... It's a china cabinet that came from his dad's house, and it's full of quilts. It's not the only quilts I have, but it's full of quilts. The reflection on the glass is so hard, it's hard to take a picture straight on. So we were going to open the doors and just take a picture, just for fun. Um, let me talk about a little bit of wool first. I got out some wool things that I want to, I don't know if I'll get them done. I have all these great ambitions and sometimes I don't get them done. This is pure and simple. It's a wool 
applique book by Maggie Bananami, and that is how you say her name because I've taken class from her, a couple classes, and that's how she pronounces her name, Maggie Bananami. So um, I have a kit, and I'm not sure where I got it for this step into my garden. And I would like to at least, it's done in three parts, so like here's part one. I would like to at least get a start on that this year. I didn't get the kit out, I should. It's just fabulous. I love these primitive wool things. So I was on, I guess I was on Facebook. I don't, I don't really, I rarely ever post anything. Occasionally, I will go on Facebook for a few, um, just to look at some of the um, stitching groups that I'm in. So I do occasionally go on Facebook, but it's not something that I regularly do. But for some reason, I was on, no, I can't find what I'm looking for. I was on Facebook, and I came across a lot, somebody had reposted a live um, Facebook Live thing going on with um, it's M and E Quilt Shop. They're in Ohio. It's actually Mabel and Ethel. So I don't know if it's the name of their shop is Mabel and Ethel or if it's just M and E. But anyway, two women sitting around talking. <laughs> Hilarious. They were very funny. So I went to their website, which I think the website is M and E. M and E quilt shop. And I purchased something which should come today. It's out for delivery. We'll see. And um, I was so excited. I think it's a wool kit. I think the pattern comes with it. I hope. <laughs> so anyway, then I saw something else and I thought, oh, I want that too. So I called him and I said, can you add this to it? And she said, well, do you have the book? And this is it, topiary. So I'm getting a kit for this and a kit for another item. I'll let you know what I get. <laughs> I'm really not that crazy, I promise. I really am not. I just get on here and I, my brain kind of sits down on me. Anyway, so then... You know, that spurred me to get out some of my wool applique pieces. And I have this kit, this wonderful kit, crinkle, crinkle, all wool. And this is another one of Maggie's designs. And the Country Sampler has a club. I'm not in the club, but occasionally they'll have extras. So I ordered this. And it just is so cute with that bunny and the cart. This one is called, I got it last year, Miss Mr. Bunny's Garden Cart by Maggie Bonanomy. So the pattern is in here. Isn't that adorable? This one is from Country Sampler. The one I'm getting in the mail today is from Emony. Emony. <laughs> so that's a little bit of wool. And then I have a quilt that I've been working on. Let me see if I can find the... Some of these things for me are just kind of long-term projects. And I'll pick it up whenever. Um, this is a quilt by Paula Barnes. Paula and what's the other gal's name? They've had a couple of different names of their business. Blue, oh gosh. Anyway, she lives in Texas, I think, and they design quilts. And a lot of them are pieced quilts. But this Heaven and Earth came out quite a while ago. And so I started working on it. I've done a lot of the pieced blocks.
love the colors. Very dark and dirty, which is my thing. But yet they have some, there's some bright colors in them. So I've done a lot of the piece floss. Complete with threads on them. I don't charge extra for you to look at the threads. Basket blocks, star blocks. But I think this will be stunning. Some log cabin blocks. This will be stunning when it's on the wall, I think. This is a section I have to put together. The blue is not as vibrant as it looks in most pictures. It's a little more toned down. Some chain blocks. I think that's all the blocks I have done. I have still some more. Um, what did I do? Gosh. Oh, days like this, I should just stay in my sewing I still have some blocks to do. I have to do this block. I have to do this one that has the piece or the applique basket. I have to do this. But I'm ready to do this one. And once I do that, and then I have to do, I think, this one. And then there's, you know, there's actually an applique border that goes on it too, but I don't, with like a vine. It doesn't show in this picture, but I have another picture where it shows with that border, but I'm not going to do that. I'll be happy to have it done, just this middle part. Plus, it'll be a good size to hang on the wall. I might put another black border. I don't know. We'll see. But I don't think I'm going to do all the applique. So this block here with the angel and the flag, and this vine here with the flag, flower actually goes on to that. So what did I do with that one? I just had it. Oh here's part of the picture. Maybe I will do this. That's pretty cool. Here's part of the picture of you can add an extra border with that's okay. It's all in one of those big containers. Anyway I thought I had it out. Oh here it is. Yeah. So this is the next block that I need to work on. And I haven't even started it. But I have the middle block finished. This is hand applique. It's a little tricky getting that flag to match up, but anyway. I still have to draw the face on the angel. I'll do that with a Sharpie. So now that I have this finished, I can go and work on this block to add to it. Then I can sew this whole middle section together. And then the next one I'll probably work on is this, because that's all applique. I, I, got, I don't know if I want to do the initials. You know, it's supposed to be like the wedding, I guess, sampler, established 1981. And then initials, and then your. But the problem with Whitchurch is it doesn't fit. So I don't know. I haven't decided how to work all that in. So I think that's it. I showed you quilting. I showed you wool applique. I showed you cross stitch. I think that's it. <laughs> it's one fifty one, and I went. I'm just about at an hour. Thank you for all your views from last time, my whip parade. <laughs> now I just need to get in and finish some of them and turn them into framed pieces. Um, I never know which one. I have three out for framing now, so hopefully they'll be back. I told them March was fine. I didn't need them till. I don't really need them, but kind of like to have them by March. So I hope you all are doing well, not freezing if you're <laughs> the northern areas of the country. Um, it's been cloudy here, but we've had some great weather, great weather. It's not been humid. It's been in the 60s. It's just fabulous. It's what people come to Florida in the winter for. 
So anyway, so I just want to say love you and I will see you in two weeks. So happy stitching.